Hey everybody, welcome to History University. My name is Tom, and today, along with dynamic science, we are going to break down some facts and history of evolution. I want to give a quick shout out to Dynamic Science for helping me on this collaboration. I'm going to leave a link down below to their channel. I highly recommend that you check them out. They discuss some pretty cool science topics and they do a great job with their content. So please go on and give them a nice view. So today, the scientific community views evolution as a fact, but it wasn't always that way. Theories of evolution have emerged for thousands of years before a solidified version came to be. The first theory that involves evolution comes in the 500s BC by an ancient Greek philosopher known as Anaximander. Anaximander is remembered for his contributions to astronomy, geography, and geometry. He is considered one of the first people to seek out answers in nature through scientific inquiry rather than the use of mythology, like previous civilizations such as the Sumerians and Egyptians. Anaximander had a particular interest in the origins of nature. He speculated the origins of human life and proposed that humans came from another animal. He believed that these animals most likely originated in water. According to his quote-unquote evolutionary theory, he believed animals sprang out of the sea a long time ago. He believed that they were born trapped in a really spiny bark, but as they got older, the bark would dry up and animals would be able to break through it. As more dry land came to exist on Earth, humankind had to adapt. Anaximander proposes that over time, humans emerged from a fish or some fish-like human species that had to adapt to the new climate. He held this view because he noticed that humans had a very long infancy stage. He didn't believe that early humans would have been able to survive given that they're very vulnerable from a young age. Anaximander proposes one of the first theories that we can claim has some evolutionary thought behind it, but it really wasn't that accurate. For hundreds of years, there'll be similar proposed ideas for evolution, but none of them seem to be as accurate as Jean-Baptiste Lamarck's theories in the early 1800s. Lamarck believed that organisms became more complex by moving up a ladder of progression. He referred to this phenomenon as the force that perpetually tends to make order. He argued that organisms thus moved from simple to complex in a steady and predictable way. His first two laws can quickly be summed up as, if you use a certain organ, it'll become stronger, if you don't use an organ, it'll become weaker, and the reason why you get stronger or weaker organs is based on your environment. His classic example is his view on giraffes. He believed that if a giraffe stretched its neck to reach up higher leaves on a tree, that a fluid would flow into the neck and make it longer. The offspring would inherit a longer neck and they would continue themselves to reach up higher trees. This would continuously pass down longer necks for the next generation. While the neck would become longer, other organs would not be used as much and continuously fade away. This view on giraffe is known as the use and disuse theory of acquired characteristics. This theory is not accurate, but it would become monumental for biologists of the day. It would pave the way for a later naturalist and biologist known as Charles Darwin. Continuing the topic of evolution, I am going to pass it on to my friend, Dynamic Science. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear evolution? In layman's terms, the word evolution is the long process of change. The change of genotypes, thus characteristics of a species over time and generations. Changes that resulted in the formation of the diverse life we see on planet Earth. Charles Robert Darwin, a British scientist, naturalist and author, was the first person to give a complete elaborate theory on biological evolution. From 1831, he embarked on his six-year-long voyage upon the HMS Beagle to explore and study plants, animals and the natural world. In the 1850s, Darwin wrote an extremely influential and revolutionary, yet highly controversial book called Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. It proposed that all life is the result of descent with modification. All life on Earth shares common ancestors, starting from a single cell life form. Darwin said that due to limited resources, only organisms with heritable traits can survive and leave more offspring than their peers. He coined this natural selection, which caused major conflict with the church, the most influential institution of that time. Let us zoom in a little further, shall we? 
in particular, the evolution of Homo sapiens, you and me, the last surviving species of the genus Homo. The process that resulted in present day humans is a very long complex evolutionary development. Humans fall under the order of primates, which is the third most diverse order of mammals, and consists of around 250 or more species, including apes, chimpanzees and orangutan. There are 17 different orders of mammals, which diverged 80 to 65 million years ago. Some of the major steps in the evolution of modern humans from our hominid ancestors are the adaption to living on the ground, walking on two feet, evolving a large brain, creating complex language, the agricultural revolution, and of course, our ability to construct and manage large civilizations. Studies suggest that primitive primates evolved into existence around 55 million years ago, with evidence showing chimp and human lineage diverging from here around 8 to 6 million years ago. Our ancestors that began walking on two legs and living in the savanna between 6 to 4 million years ago. As well as using stone tools regularly, Hominids began to develop meat-rich diets around 2.5 million years ago, which may have literally fueled the evolution of larger brains. It is from here, in Africa, that the genus Homo begins. Archaeological evidence has shown that the first true hunter-gatherers, Homo erectus, were found living in Asia around 1.8 to 1.5 million years ago indicating the first stages of migration out of Africa to then occupy Europe, Australia, and at last around 30,000 years ago, America. Early human fossils and archaeological remains suggest that there have been many species under the genus Homo, including Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Neanderthals, and of course Homo sapiens, wise man. Oldest among these were Homo habilis, and yet, only Homo sapiens are the last remaining species of our kind, thanks to our better adaptivity techniques, cognitive abilities, and our capacity to communicate in ways in which no other species can. Things like fire, tools, and some complex communication were used since the dawn of the genus Homo, humans. But art, culture, religion, philosophy, large variations in language, scriptures, records, everything that forms the basis of human society today, in the grand scheme of things, are very recent. The Neolithic Revolution, commonly known as the Agricultural Revolution, around 12,000 years ago, was one of the greatest wide-scale transitions humans ever experienced. No longer were we nomadic hunter-gatherers, we were able to settle down and support larger groups, as a society. Thus, the rapid rise in the human population began. The energy and awareness that used to be focused on simply surviving day to day was now able to focus on creating and building. Civilizations began to rise, and we became one of the wisest beings on the planet. We started asking important questions and seeking answers. Philosophy arose with the Industrial Revolution being the final stroke of our genius. We have changed, built, and ruined so much that we can simultaneously smile and frown at our doings. We all have our differences in thoughts and beliefs, however, these are just that. Believe it or not, we all began from the same point, some nucleoid in the ocean. Thank you for the information, Dynamic Science. It has been a pleasure to collaborate with you on this project. Once again, I'm leaving a link down below to their channel. Please check them out for some cool science topics. They're an amazing page and they're fun to watch. All right, ladies and gents, that wraps up for this video. Thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe if you can. And most importantly, have a good day.